You're welcome back to the show this morning. It's still good morning, Anambra. And we're here this morning to look at the topic, the dangers of transactional politics to democracy in Nigeria. We already have uh, guests with us in the studio this morning. We have Nonso Orakwe. Nonso Orakwe is the state coordinator, uh, Catch Them Young Community. Nonso, good morning and welcome to the show. Good morning. Good morning, Indiana. Good morning, Southeastern Nigeria at large. We also have with us this morning Kanayo Obidiwo. He's a public affairs analyst. Good morning, Kanayo. Welcome to the program. Good morning. All right, like I said, uh, we are going to be exploring the topic, the dangers of transactional policy, uh, politics rather, to democracy in Nigeria. We all know that uh, transactional politics is not a new thing, but the scope in the uh, run-up of Nigeria's election that is slated for next year is worrisome and threatens to derail democracy, not just in Nigeria, but also Africa. And that's why we are actually uh, talking about the topic today, the dangers of transactional politics to democracy in Nigeria. I will start from you, Non. So um, I would also like us to, you know, start from the foundation. Let's actually explain what it means, what transactional politics is all about, so that some of the people listening to us this morning will understand where we are coming from. Transactional politics, what is it all about? So where did it start? Did it just start now? Okay. Um, when, um, when we hear transactional uh, politics, it is an unusual way of politicking. It is unusual way of uh, accepting uh, responsibility in governance. When we talk about transactional, we are talking about give and take uh, affair. Something, you give me this, I give you that. If you don't give me this, you are not going to get it. And um, it did not just start today. It's something that have, um, that have been there for a long time, but uh, we failed to you know, manage it. We failed to curb it at the early stage. And that is, where, that is why we get to where we are today, that every day in our political system, in our political field, it keeps uh, 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 increasing. And this, uh, when we talk about this transactional politics, it is from the both side of... Uh, the uh, um, internal democracy of a political party and also the general pu uh, pu uh, public when we talk about uh, when, we, when we are talking about electorates so it's vice versa so what i'm trying to say is this transactional leadership is where one said give me tickets and i give you money give me uh, um, uh, facility and i give you tickets okay and uh, we have seen it rolling up rolling up or rolled up in this past uh, uh, primaries right. that, okay, from starting from APC, where they placed 100 million uh, nomination form, and also, uh, we also see how PDP run their primaries and the, at, the, at, the, at, the, at the national convention they had a few days ago, where, you know, dollars, pounds, and all of that came to markets. And people has nothing to do than to, you know, queue into the already, uh, already established protocol. And that protocol is to do what? Give me this and I will give you my votes. So that is where we have found ourselves. Well, I don't know why you use that word. <laughs> Established protocols. No, it's a, it, they've established mm. it. Why? 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 We, it, it, it's not PDP that. In fact, all the political parties established that, starting from this nomination form, if someone who is being paid salary of, even if it's two, two million, could afford 100 million. What does it, the signal that is passing across is, do, is what? Is that this thing cannot get fixed again. We are going in there to make business, to transact, you know? So, and transacting means that there is something beyond my salary that I'm going to get in order to uh, augment myself as a minister or as any position that, uh, that, uh, that you are uh, occupying at that present. Uh, present time. All right, uh, let's come uh, to you, Kana. You're now talking about the primaries that happened last week, and uh, you've seen what uh, was actually played out at the end of the day. Now, what do you make out, or what do you think is new about this particular primaries that was just conducted? And what do you make out of the uh, monetary inducement from the aspirants to the delegates? 
thank you uh, very much. You see, uh, I wonder where this country is heading to. I wonder where we are copying from. I still wonder what our electoral laws are, if actually we do have. I'm wondering if actually the law enforcement agencies are there. What we are talking about is a, a political crime. If you give out bribe, you that gives out bribe is as culpable as he who takes. And now we have monetized politics in Nigeria to the level of impunity. Nobody cares. And if a country is actually tilting towards impunity, the next thing is anarchy because the law is no more or no longer effective. You can see the buying of vote. In Jigawa or, in, or Jigawa State, money are being returned money for inducement because the man failed and said, come on, so bring back my money. The other one said, <laughs> we are giving him back his money. And it's a shame. Police have seen them. A later law, they have floated it and nobody is doing anything. So I wonder how Nigeria will stand before the Committee of Nations to say we have actually practiced democracy transparently. Ghana conducts election. The Benin Republic conducts election. In the modern day technology, we have not seen where money is exchanging as the way we are seeing in Nigeria. So Nigeria is actually bastardizing democracy. As far as we are concerned, we have not been witnessing the kind of uh, uh, merchandising of votes the way it is happening today. And it is happening with all effrontery. In the first place, somebody was telling me that dollar was exchanging hands. I said, yes, if dollar is exchanging hands, to me, if I am a judge, uh, they have not actually uh, 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 <coughs> fall against the law. He said, what? I said, Niger dollar is not Nigerian currency. We are talking about our Naira. Foreign exchange foreign exchange in this country, okay, dollar is being changed for 800 now. This is a result of this money politics going on. A dollar that was being changed for six, six, six naira 20, 25 years ago, four naira 50, I, I, I exchanged dollar for four naira 50 kobo when I came back from the U.S. in 1987. And today, it's 800. And, and nobody stops it from moving up to $100. Who are causing this in our politicians? Like he rightly said, because somebody knows that as soon as he gets into office, then he will amass wealth. Accountant General is being, you know, roped into four, 48 billion. How could somebody in a country make 48 billion? In China, he would have, once it is proven, he's dead. Because he has actually marred the development of several individuals in that country. And we don't care. So, Money politics has made mess of Nigerian political system, and it is a shame. Uh, one of the candidates that we drew said, yes, I have experience that even within the primaries, going to canvas for votes, you are asked to bring dollars. He withdrew. It's a shame. To me, Nigeria is not playing politics. We are in a state of political uh, merchandising and... Uh, uh, what they call it, we use a bazaar cell. It is now a bazaar cell. Mm. That is what it is. So it's unfortunate. Okay, um, just like we actually established here about someone asking why, as an aspirant, asking why they should pay such amount to delegates for them to uh, canvass and ask them to vote for them at the end of the day. Now, we want to uh, also explore the implication of this uh, transactional politics on the government. Let's start from there.
on the government, the masses, at the end of the day. Because these people, they are acquiring this, they are looting this phone, and they're using it to buy delegates that will vote for them, even though a lot of them still went back to collect their money when they didn't emerge the winner. Now, what is going to be the implication of this on the government? Well, uh, it is very simple. Before I get to that, I, I read about... Uh, uh, Shehu, the one of the aspirants of governorship aspirants on uh, Kaduna or something, mm. the man said openly, publicly, I am not going to give delegates money. <laughs> I, I, they were like, what do you mean? I am not going to give delegates money. And eventually he did not give delegates money. Okay? Do you know what is called? Two persons voted for him. Two persons only voted for him. Now he went to his street and like, look at what happened, da 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 da. Please, if you are the two persons, please raise up your hand. Funny enough, it was about uh, 300 and something persons. About 300 and something persons said they voted for him. So who is the two persons? That answers this question we are, you, you just asked. The, it is very simple that whatever you give, Whatever man sow, he will reap. And haven't seen the way it is moving. It's not only, we are looking at the national, uh, by the, the two gigantic political parties. What about the grassroots ones we are, we are managing here in Anambra? Still, money exchange hand, even to the level of, uh, uh, of uh, 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 what's it called, um, um, uh, House of Assembly. People were moving, coughing up money to do this. If you don't do it, you fail. So it is very, it's very simple. Once you don't do the needful, once you could not be able to give out this money, you will fail. And the, 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 the expected result is that you won't have access to facilities normally, the, 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 the access to facilities normally provided by the government. You, the basic amenities, you won't see them being, being in place. In fact, the unborn children, the unborn children are crying for this country. They are cry crying for our leaders and our politicians. And let me tell you, whether we like it or not, it's no longer politics as usual. People will suffer. Whatever you sow, you reap. Whether you're a president, whether you are a governor, whether you're a senate, whether you are... The unborn children will deal with you. It's, it's, there's, no there's no two ways about it. So what I'm trying to say is this, that... The, 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 the repercussion, the after effect of this thing is that there will be underdevelopment. People, you even make a wrong choice because you have, you have, you, you have, you have taken dollars. I'm sorry, some of them might, not, might have not touched dollars before. <laughs> and this is an opportunity to touch. In fact, I saw one video yesterday, trending, was it yesterday or day before yesterday, trending that uh, the money they, they got yes. from... Um, from uh, aspirants, one just launched a, a, a Toyota Camry muzzle. And uh, they were telling him, uh, delegate money, delegate money. And he's happy. Imagine. So what I'm trying to say is that there will be underdevelopment. Psychological problems, will, the traumas will, em will invade people. A whole lot of things. That, look at what we are suffering now. Insecurity. These are what you will see. Because after this, there will be a fall. Look at the uh, River State. Where, is he, where, where did he get that kind of money he spent in the, in the, in the primaries? Is he not River State Treasury? Was he richer than who he is now before he emerged as a governor? So these things happen and people suffer. We are suffering insecurity. We are suffering uh, uh, under the, uh, uh, um, what's it called? Uh, 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 infrastructure issues. A whole lot of things, what, health issues we are suffering in, and these people are not thinking about. Even the electorates are not thinking about, after now, where would these people, because they must get this money back. Where would they get this money back from? You pay your tax. A common man in the streets, a common man in the market and all of that, pay your tax. After, a, just a nobody will just siphon the whole thing. He mentioned uh, Akantanjera, 80 billion. In River State, I, I think he's over, over 80 billion. Also, so where are we? The problem is the people. What if you bring that money and people say, "No, we need somebody. We need." This is the the, the next question we, I wanted to we, ask. We need, we need, we need, we need people that we need someone that can deliver. Someone is shouting in the desert, all over this election election area. 
We want to revolutionize this country from consumption to from production. consumption to what? Production. To production. production. And people are not listening. So <laughs> the people is the problem. What if this money, this dollar comes in on your table and you say, no, for the unborn children, for unborn children, for the youth, for the sake of this country, I won't take this money. To hell with this money. But sometimes they look at what is happening at the national level and say, since this man can steal 80 billion, who am I? And you go scot free. And you know some people we always say that when you even elect them, even if you don't collect the money and you elect them, that tomorrow you might not even get uh, to, to them again if you have problems in your constituency or that, that. But let's not dwell on that. Let's talk about the reason why these transactional politics keep uh, swear, uh, swearing. Because this is now, he started earlier before now, but what we saw this time around is so much. So let's talk about the reasons. What are the things behind it? Why does it keep growing by the day? You see, uh, there's one thing I found out in this country. Crime keep growing. People are moving from one level to the other. Politics, people are moving from one level of political fraud to the other. What are we talking about? There is hunger in the land. Whether we like it or not, there is hunger in the land. And it takes a very strong character. Just like he said, offer me bribe, I said no. It takes a very strong character, even our institutions. When I mean institutions, all, 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 all institutions in this country is infested with one sharp deal or the other. Because we have not actually imbibed that character. Character of contentment. Character of political development. An ordinary voter who is on the street, who is lining up to vote, is voting because of one inducement or the other. Unlike when you look at other countries, you find out that people who come out to vote are voting based on their conscience that they need this change. It was like that in Nigeria. And when a writer said we had a country, there was a country, people were laughing. People thought he was uh, talking rubbish. And actual, actual, uh, in actual fact, some of us that have lived in this country know there was a country. Today in Nigeria, you find out that politics is so monetized that even within the family circle, for you to become the chairman of your kindred, <laughs> you have to spend some money. So you now see that it is becoming a norm for us to spend money, for us to receive money. And at the end of the day, like he rightly said, he tells on the social development of our communities. You find out that that contract, that article of faith that you are going to represent us. You are my parliamentarian. I, I voted for you. My PVC is my power that I did this. It's no longer there because you have been settled. He has paid you off for four years and the next four years he comes around and can vote for vote and give you money and you vote for him. And you, when you look at the money that you are given, even if you are given oh, $2,000, spread it within that three, four years. You find out that you are shortchanged by your conscience because you did not vote, you know, by your conscience. So we are playing down money politics without, playing it down in the sense that the law enforcement agents, we have electoral laws and the people are openly, with effrontery, flouting it and nothing is done. Nobody. Have you seen a situation where somebody is jailed for uh, electoral malpractice? No. No. Before you know it is arrested, the next time the big guy who is working for make a phone call, release him is my boy. He's gone. And no, no consequences. So until we, we make sure that there are consequences for every individual that flaws electoral law. Look at all those big men that are contesting the election. The one in Cross River say, Kai, uh, you must bring back my jeep. Better go to police station and pack it and save yourself any embarrassment. It, and that's it. So it is a shame, like you rightly said, somebody went, went out for delegate. I have been a national delegate. 
I didn't know. I wish I am one of them now. Then we were all going there just for the rough matters of being a national delegate. You wore your tag. You, you know, that's all. Who started bribing their way to become delegates? What? Yes. So it that happened. is the thing. It so, so it is, it is a, a merchandising something that I am investing to make profit. It's a shame. I wish that we should start to discuss politics when I mean as a study from the basic, you know, even the market women. People should put them on that pedestal to understand. Say that then you go gain a lot, but you still no. vote your conscience. That is the, according to your yeah, conscience. That is rather. the thing. That is the, the irony of any go gain a little key vote to your conscience. It is not. It's not true. We have seen the situation where people went to the oracle <laughs> to swear, "I must vote for you." I don't but you say woof and woof. These are things that happen. You know, it is a kind of mundane politics we are playing now. Otherwise, we are, by now, Nigeria would have graduated with technology that politics, politics will not be what we are seeing now. Yes, in 2014, 2014, I mean 15, Buhari, before he emerged in Lagos, money was crossing over. Even though he was not the sponsor, but people sponsored it. And the same thing, Atiku, they look at what he said about Mike. We can get in 200 and something. If Tambawal did not leave 182 votes of the North East, the old North East uh, zone of the vote, I think, I mean, Mwike would have won him. But Tambawal did the magic right there on the floor of the uh, voting. Please, cast your vote for my brother Atiku. And that's how it went. Otherwise, Mwike had very serious deep pocket. And he dished it out. And we all saw it. And he's still boasting. And one, one good thing about the Nigerian politics, after spending that much and they know you are, you have the war chest and you have the pocket, you'll be appointed for you to go and recoup that money. We can must recoup, uh, recoup his money, whether they like it or not, if they win. Otherwise, that's it. He will call the shot in River State because he's now bringing in a new guy. <laughs> How we are discussing it as if this is the right thing to do, like what well, we are just dishing out, but that is what is obtainable. Is that the right thing to do? We are, what are we going to do? I know that it has gotten this bad, but we can still salvage the situation because we are talking about the dangers of this transactional politics on democracy, which of course is the government of the people, by the people, and for the people. But I wonder if that definition still stands now. Okay, uh, where we, we will take it off from here, uh, so far as politics is concerned, I think, um, I think uh, political parties should um, immediately dismantle the so-called transactional politics by reducing the cost of nomination form. One, let us go there first. Two, the people should own the process. Do you know why these things are happening? We only have few, well, like you said, there is hunger in the town. And it's only few persons that can be able to need on the table. I go now, go for for near for It's only few persons. But people should, by all costs, own the process, especially political parties. People are afraid of joining political parties. People are afraid of coming to political meetings and say their minds. Once there is like 60-50% like minds in any political party, they can overthrow. Because you can't do nonsense there. Eyes are watching you. If there is any mago mago, they will rise against it. They will talk against it. They will, they will own the process. But the fact is that people don't want to engage themselves. They say politics is a dating game. Who, 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 how, who will make it pure? If it's dirty, who will make it pure? That, as a matter of fact, is if you're, if you're a staunch uh, uh, religious leader or whatever, you're, you're a religious leader or a Christian, once you join politics, people will begin to look at you somehow. You, that you are no longer with us. You have stained yourself. 
And we are all dying there. We are all dying. So how many of these political, uh, religious leaders are members of political parties? And they want to play it and play it religiously. So what I'm trying to say is this. All those religious actions and religious practices you are playing, you know this is not good, this is not good, that is not good. Bring it into politics and let's uh, bring sanity into it. So it must go back to the people. If people are not concerned, this thing will keep leaking. Like you were, you were asking, I believe that if political parties sponsor their candidates, because the, it is normal that political parties sponsor candidates, yeah. not candidates, even you, you don't have to pay for nomination form. I have not heard during the First Republic and Second Republic that people were paying for nomination form. I was a chairman of a party. In Anambra State, nobody paid me one couple for form to run for Senate, for House of Representatives, and the state assemblies. Nobody paid one couple. Forms were given to me in Abuja. I came back here in office here. People who shows interest takes the form. Nobody pays any couple for expression of interest form and then, and then, and then becomes a, 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 a candidate of my party. Now, Government, I mean, the political parties are taking money from it. Can you imagine the rate up to 30 billion? What are they doing with the money? I remember in those days, political party, once it is election time, whatever is, you know, no more handling charges, make sure that your agents, you know, have some snacks and water, they bring the money for you to entertain them because they have left their job for the day and come to work for the party. It's no longer like that. So until we make sure that people don't spend money in politics, that you are being sponsored by the, your party. Before now, chairman of a party, the governor of the state is answerable to the chairman of a party from his uh, uh, political party. And it is the other way around now. Today, today, today. So they are now they the are now calling the, the shot government. and then changing chairman, chairman of parties the way they want. Look at what happened in APC. Look at what happened in PDP. They keep recycling and changing chairman of their national chairman and even secretaries and the rest of them. Mwike was doing whatever he likes in his party. The same way uh, they are doing in APC. And look at it now. Look at what ABC, because how can INEC change the goalposts in the middle of the game? Okay, we still come back to actually ex explore the roles INEC have to play in this whole thing because we are trying to see how we can actually reduce this transactional politics to the barest minimum. Um, but right about now, we go um, out there because there are people we interviewed this is what they have to say concerning the topic under this question this morning democracy is not supposed to be transactional transaction happens in the market it's not in democracy so you know when you are transacting in the market everyone wants to make profit so the seller wants to make profit seller might even put uh, a huge profit on his, on his or her goods. So you can't be, if you now turn democracy into a transaction like marketplace, you know, a lot of things will go wrong. A lot of things will go wrong, like, like people will start telling you how much they want to collect for their votes. You know, it's a problem. If, if you feel that you want to transact in democracy, you, you know that you may not be able to pay for what other people can pay because look at what is in your pocket. Maybe you pay 1.2 million. Someone is ready to pay 5 million for, for, for that same vote. So, the, so people will just collect money and, and vote for the highest bidder. So it has a lot of danger into the democracy in Nigeria. It, it has a lot of danger because, because the right person will not be in place as the governor or the president. We always vote in the wrong people. At the end of the day, we have the problem that we are having right now, we have more problem because, 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 because you, you bring in the wrong person, at the end of the day, you have the same problem. If a contestant pays a huge amount of money in order to be involved in politics, the danger is that at the end of everything, you find out that the candidate will do everything possible to recover the money. 
to the detriment of the citizens. Yes, because assuming during maybe electoral campaign that the citizens were promised that uh, there will be good road, there will be good hospital, there will be free education and all that. We found out about it because this candidate paid an exorbitant amount of money to go into politics. The, 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 the end thing there is that the candidate will go a long way, do everything possible to recover that money. Because uh, 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 an average Nigerian is, um, will I say, selfish, an average politician. So they will always look for their pockets. So that's the danger. Normally, uh, politics shouldn't be transactional because it's leadership. And leadership is not transactional because it's more of uh, taking people to a particular destination. So if someone has no destination that he wants to take people to, he should not think about politics because it's leadership. So the danger of transactional uh, politics is that we will have people who are business people that will come into, that will use business ideology to, to politics. Why? You should be political, uh, you should be thinking about leadership, you should be thinking about next future, next uh, generation, next. It should be in the person's mind. So, but if it's transactional, he will not think about it. He won't uh, how his pocket will be filled. Dangers are numerous. But I believe uh, one of the dangers is that uh, if politics is uh, put on transactional basis, it all means that it has lost its value. So we no longer maintain the value of politics. It is going to lead into, or it leads into having uh, hard-backed leaders who cannot deliver well then uh, it will also lead to money or financial investment because they are entering there to recover what they have spent. So it will also lead to malfunctioning. They will not function well. What the masses so, uh, are supposed to be given will no longer be given to them. The social amenities like schools, infrastructural facilities, so many things that will help the masses to, uh, to cope in the, within the economy will not be delivered. So I believe that uh, if people who are really qualified for the office of leadership are given the chance to lead, I believe that uh, our country will be better. What we have is the money part. And once money back, money back determines who is to be selected as a party candidate, it behoves, it therefore means that we can't get the best candidate. There is a big problem. Big problem is saying that we don't get the best of the candidates. Yeah. And it is, it portends danger to the upcoming generation. You're welcome back to the show. Uh, from what uh, those people uh, said, uh, we can deduce that today we are all just enumerating the dangers of uh, transactional politics. And in, in summary, they're saying that uh, if it continues like that, one of the dangers is that we are not entrenching uh, proper leaders. There's people that have that leadership qualities, but just businessmen to go out there because they're now seeing politics as buying and selling. Of course, I pay you to, for you to vote for me. So when I get there, I have to recoup, I have to recover all I have spent. So there's no more uh, those people with leadership qualities going there to represent us. And then we are devoid of so many infrastructural development and so many things we would have gained if we had actually enthroned a leader, a proper leader in that position. I, that, that's, 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 uh, I quite agree with them and um, it's, uh, it's something that um, all of us will not, um, will not fold our hands and say let it, let it just be. There's something I used to say, um, we need to leave the level of uh, carrot approach to stick approach especially in our electoral act. Um, even before now, if our electoral act 
or electoral laws has been implemented even to 20%. I don't think all these things will be happening. You see, my colleague was, was talking about um, when he was the chairman of a political party, there is nothing like buying, picking or buying of a nomination form, paying that, paying all those things. But since maybe Electoral Act accepted that, why not, you know, be stick about it? Let there be strict approach about it. Because we know, one thing about Nigeria, uh, Nigeria is that we know how to do uh, nice policies and all of that, but the implementation becomes a problem. So what I'm trying to say is this. The INEC and whoever, uh, the security, whatever uh, enforcement team that is needed to make sure that the, the, um, our electoral acts are being implemented very well should sit up now. The INEC one, then whoever commission that appoints, commission appoints to assist in implementation. Two, there is another thing that is actually hitting on us. The campaign funds. You know, I know that one has been there before even the amendment. Nobody thinks about that. Nobody checkmates that. So, and you see a team that maybe wants to check, act on that, they will go and take bribe and then uh, goes home and sit, uh, and sit back. So what I'm trying to say is this. Before even the people, the people in charge of electoral, I neck in quotes, should sit up and do the needful. If not, this thing will keep trending. Because if we don't get anybody uh, punished, one person or two punished, others will not learn lesson. Still talking about the uh, reform, the Electoral Act, so that's the Electoral Act of 2022. I know that one of the things that INEC actually mentioned there is that, uh, that is mentioned there in there is that INEC requested that every political party should submit the registers of, uh, the, asper of the political aspirant 30 days before the primaries. This will now make people to know that you cannot jump from one political party to another. But we are seeing it playing out already that people that couldn't get the ticket in a political party have already jumped to another political party. Before the primaries. Before the primaries. Some people, even, some people said that they withdrew from the primaries so that they will now go to another political But we are talking about 30 days. Now you are in a former political party, for example. You are in PDP, for example. Now before the primaries you withdrew maybe two days or three days before the primaries and then you jump to another political party but 30 days we are talking about 30 days so what are we looking at at the end of the day you see uh there's a, a, a common language weather you give weather because you have somebody whom you thought or whom you think that is a strong political character to your party all the political parties actually structured the weather into their constitution. So constitutionally, the person or the, the politician that moved from party to party shows that he has no ideology. If I am a Democrat, I am a Democrat. If I'm a Republican, I'm a Republican. In this sense, we don't have a clear-cut ideology among parties. Parties don't even have manifestos. So what you are asking now is, why would INEC? I have just said that INEC decided to move uh, uh, the, the deadline after others have complied. And the almighty APC is still yet. And now you moved it. And they have been able to put it between 6th and 7th or so of this new month for them to now beat the gun. Yes, the no, that. but that was wrong. If an examination is set and somebody did not prepare and then the examination date is there and he goes into the examination hall and he, he was not able to answer his questions and fell, that's, that's it. Why would you now consider a political party and you are an independent umpire as it's supposed to be? Are they now independent? Are they now actually an umpire that we will have confidence in. So the point remains that Nigeria keep dropping. Whether we like it or not, politically we are not developing. You see, this vote buying we are talking about is perpetuating corruption in this country. 
because we are fighting corruption. Their mantra was to fight corruption, to make sure, the, I mean, the present administration. But we have seen, me and you, <laughs> have seen that we have more corruption cases in the last seven years. We have about 363 days or 62 days to go. This, expi this administration will expire. And we, when you will look at the scoreboard, we will be left with nothing to write home about. Why? Because we have not done the needful. The administration has not changed. Look at Rwanda. After 23 years of genocide, we, uh, I have applied to go on a, a tour of Rwanda. Just they say tour, you know, if you like, you can apply now. People are clamoring to go to Rwanda in Africa as a model state. After 23 years, Port Yeme was able to turn the table around to develop the city. So it is a very big shame that Nigeria is going down the drain. Crime, instead of bringing the, the, the down, we are putting in some sophistications into criminality in this country. Okay. Good morning. Good morning. Tell us your name and your location. Morning. It's very, very nice. Thank you. I, I'm from Niger State. You're from Niger State. What is your name? Yes. My name is uh, Muhammad Waziri. Okay, Waziri. Uh, go I'm ahead with your contribution, I'm Waziri. Very happy. I'm very happy when, uh, Okay, thank you so much, Waziri. Thank you. I will be happy. I like to make one take my name anytime. I like to hear a name. All right. Thank you so much, Waziri. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> we like hearing your voice too. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, just as we are uh, concluding now, um, no, so let's come back to you now, seeing what has been playing out or what has already played out, and we are expecting to um, APC's primaries too. Now, what are we going to expect in the election coming up the year, that is next year, 2023? Should we now do something to curb this vote buying, vote selling, whatever it is called? Some people say it's now business of buying and selling. Now, what should we do from the uh, electoral umpire down to the government of the people because we are talking about the reasons why this thing keep happening is because people are hungry when you put food on the table you st uh, so somebody that is hungry will want to eat the food and damn the consequences and all that so what should the government of the day do now to see that we curb this uh, transitional politics because we are looking at the election that is coming up next year and we know that there are a whole lot of things that Nigerians are expecting from the next person that will emerge as the leader in this country? Well, I think Nigeria, from the part of Nigerians, they are not expecting any other thing than to uh, see where money exchanges hands. An average Nigerian now is expecting that at the polling units he is to collect like five, ten thousand, 10,000 and nothing will happen. Then, on the part of politicians, they are piling up money, you know, seizing the whole economy to make sure that it gets to their favor. But um, even at that, I, for years now, we have been coming, sensitizing people, discussing national issues and all of that. But all we need to do is to be saying it. We'll keep, we'll keep saying it. We'll keep acting. We'll keep being in the forefront. Until, this, until success is achieved. What I'm trying to say is this. We cannot fold our hands. Okay? What we we'll do, I think um, we still need to engage uh, civic education, voter education, uh, let people be aware of, uh, of their rights. Let people be aware of 
what they ought to do at any point in time. In the last governorship election, uh, we celebrated the woman that rejected 5,000 naira from a political party. And that 5,000 naira fetched her like millions or something, okay? Because of people's, uh, you know. So I think um, we should go that way, trend that way. And um, uh, even at that, I had a similar thing. Someone who, who didn't even collect, uh, who didn't even uh, collect money in this Abga PDP uh, primaries in Anambra. He was sorry. Let me just. Okay, go uh, ahead. He, he was. He was asked, "What? what who did you vote vote for?" He said, "Look at the person I voted for, and I did not collect." And sincerely, he did not collect. Okay. Do you know leaving the scene to his house, a whole lot of money. This why the person that he didn't collect, he didn't, uh, he didn't vote, he didn't vote for. That person he didn't vote for gave him almost the money shared to every yeah, other person. Good morning. What do we have here this How morning? You're yeah, fine, thank you. What's your name? Uh, my name is Audrey Awe from Latvia, Nebraska. Okay, go ahead. Uh, my, my advice is this, that the INA, mm. they, should, they, should, they should create a law. Any <laughs> position that was being funded, and give him any amount okay. to be disqualified. Okay. All right, that's, that's your right, own suggestion, right, that, that they should make a law. All right. Thank you so yeah. much. Yeah. yeah, thank you. Thank you. So there's a law. There's a law. There's a law, there's a law already. already. So what I'm trying to say is this. I next should sit up in their respective uh, duties. Two, we need to take up this responsibility. People, I mean the people now, on civic, civil society organizations like us, on Sunday we'll be also, uh, uh, have, uh, we'll have um, a, a sensitization program, as one of two churches within Oka here, still on civic education. So we need to sensitize people to know actually what their right is and when they are selling their bed right. They all know, but I think uh, the problem is poverty. But we need to address the poverty and also look at the revolutionary um, uh, uh, activities that is coming up geared towards um, uh, uh, from consumption to production. production. I still believe that that word is a strong word that people should put in their feet. Hello, good morning. Hello, good morning. Your name and your location, please. Yeah, I'm only here from Osaka. Go ahead, but reduce the volume on your TV set. Yeah, move away from that, please. Okay, can you hear me well, please? Go ahead. Okay, I am um, uh, enjoying your program. The program country is not that we are. The program is that we are not practicing democracy. What you are practicing is electocracy and autocracy. <laughs> so okay. That's the problem. If, even if you give me 5,000, we are disappointed. We are the country who last year. When I started the conversation of the uh, local government election, we were ashamed of the election because nobody came out. So the start of the election now, they will convert it to food. They will prepare us, give people. They will pass away after. We are not sure. We are, we are, are, are fighting for our rights. That the leaders, what we have, we don't have a leader. What we have is so, a selfish leader. They are not even interested on the matter. We are in the what we are doing. If the leaders are living by example, then that should be good. But when we have the unemployment, the rate of unemployment is high. And as a result, we see the consequence. The criticians will use the term, and power they will be gone. And at the end, they will come and go over. What am I trying to say? If we see what is happening in the United States, the size the the election, the federal election congress, if they want the election, they selected, and each of the delegates will give it some amount. They put their conscience as a result of ignorance and poverty. So whatever we are doing, we have to have conscience. Otherwise, we are since the electocracy and apostocracy. And if there is an element of democracy, it is a term of crazy. Thank you very much. All right. Thank you so much for your contribution and that new grammar that we just learned this morning, apontocracy and selectocracy. Okay. Um, <laughs> just um, before we go, uh, what do you have to say, Kanayo, concerning uh, ways to end this transactional politics in Nigeria? Because from all we have discussed today, 
it's no doubt is hampering the growth of democracy, not just in Nigeria, because we are a giant of Africa, and a lot of uh, African countries are looking up to us, so it's all equally hampering the growth of democracy in Africa. Yeah, it is still quite unfortunate. But it is a common phenomenon that not anything that goes up in this country never comes down. Watch it. Everything that goes up, be it in the marketplace, in the institutions, once it goes up, it doesn't come down. So how do we now bring down or how do we now stem this tide of uh, political uh, misadventure? Because it is misadventure in the sense that at the end of the day, it tells on the people of this uh, uh, country. And like you rightly said, the community of nations outside are watching us. We are on daily basis moving from one political misfortune to the other. And at the end of the day, you find out that we don't have leaders. Until we have good leaders, this country has all the potentials for this country to become great. How we are going to do it, I don't know. If we are going to call people from the Mars or from the Jupiter to come and assist us, I don't know. So, like, it is my prayer. Okay, let's just speak this last call. Hello, Hello good morning. Hello. Hello, good morning. Your name and your location, please, and move away from your TV. Hello? Hello? All right. Um, well, that's it. You are no longer picking any calls because we are just running off the show. So, can I please conclude on what you're saying? I was saying that uh, it, it, it is becoming more difficult. You see, it has permeated into our youth body. You found that the National Youth Council something is happening. Mm. And then if our root is being threatened, because the root of this country is the young ones that will grow. But as we are bastardizing the entire system and it is affecting the root, it is affecting the populace, it is affecting everybody, it is a shame. You find out that the younger ones who would have been given opportunity doesn't have the money. And uh, it is no longer party seeing this man to, that he is credible, he is knowledgeable, we will we'll sponsor him. I remember in those good days, people who actually were from the uh, Adamawa, Gongola state, were fresh from the university. They sponsored them to National Assembly. It is no longer that way. Look at what is going on now. So it is a shame that Nigeria, instead of improving politically, that we have mad it with uh, corruption. Thank you. All right. Um, having said that, we want to say a very big thank you to both of you for joining us today. And also, Arakwe, thank you so much for being here this morning. Thank you. Thank you. Please get your PVC ready. Okay. And to you, Kana, you'll be able to appreciate PVC remains your power. Okay, uh, just to let us uh, know that uh, one of the major dangers of this transactional politics is that those politicians that bribe you for you to vote for them owe you nothing at the end of the day. And once they assume that position, they will just go there to recoup all that they have spent. So just like Nonso and Kanayo have uh, rightly said this morning, it's important that we go out there, pick our PVC. Remember that it's your right. Let's vote in the next person that we know that will have those leadership qualities, not people that bought us with their money. Thank you so much for joining us on the show this morning. My name is Chidema Orangwa. Thank you to all our callers. Sorry, calls are still coming in, but we cannot pick them again because time is no longer our friend. See you again tomorrow. Bye for now. Be good.